Malachi 3, the verse 8. Lord, touch my heart in a different way tonight with this verse. We've heard many sermons brought out on it. But the Lord touched me in a different way. And Scripture coverage may be similar of past sermons, but uh, I, I'm telling you a little further in a spiritual direction of weighing our hearts out how we take concerns in uh, many points, uh, uh, maybe six points here I'd like to bring out. And y'all mirror me in prayer. And uh, let's read Malachi 3 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. And I'll make my text title tonight, Are We Robbing God? Yeah, read it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'll go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, King, King, and Lord, Lord, Savior, and Friend, Almighty God, we praise thy praise holy you. name. Jehovah Jared, the great provider, Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, Jehovah Shalom, God is peace. We thank you for the Holy Spirit to come to lead and guide to all truth. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, shedding our precious blood, dying in our place, saving our soul, washing us in the blood of the Lamb, and putting our Holy Spirit in our heart, leading God to all truth, Lord Jesus. We praise you tonight and help me deliver this message and help hearts to receive. And if there's a decision of it for anyone lost, backslidden, whatever the circumstance, Lord, touch their hearts with courage yes. and faith. Yes. Do so tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And looking at this verse, Malachi 3 8, will a man rob God? And uh, will a Christian rob God? Will a woman rob God? Will an unbeliever rob God? You know, uh, uh, I want to uh, take you to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 7 and 23rd verse and, uh, and to make us recognize and think about ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. The Lord died in our place on Calvary's tree and shed His precious blood that we might have eternal life. He died for the whole world and uh, for the sins of the world. And uh, we, we owe God for His sacrifice and love, saving us from a burning hell and lake of fire. Amen. And when it comes to tithing on this subject point, uh, too many of us have to go through learning to tithe. And uh, God owns everything we got. He, he gives it to us all. And all He asks of us is just give a tenth. And we give nothing to Him until we give it above that. As we may give the missionaries and needy, feeding the poor and needy. So many ministries of God, and I praise God for every one of them, because they're all important. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, and uh, we we got to recognize, uh, too, that uh, uh, we are bought with a price of Amen. Jesus' blood on yeah. Calvary's tree, yeah, yeah. as I brought out. And I want to take you also to Acts 5. And uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of jumping around, and whether you keep up or not uh, uh, doesn't matter, but just try to listen mainly and catch what I bring out. Uh, uh, we're familiar with chapter 5 uh, of Acts, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife sold a possession of land, amen, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to Ananias, Why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Amen? And uh, if we don't see fit to tithe to the Lord and give what He uh, deserves of our love and dedication, 
uh, as a child of God and faith in Him, uh, are, are we not lying to the Holy Ghost? And, and go on to here in verse 4, while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was so, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. Amen? And we're lying to the Holy Spirit and to God and trying to justify ourselves spending to our own needs and concerns. And we're not exercising all faith in God that He'll take care of our needs. And He says, I'll, I'll feed the sparrows and I'll clothe the fields and, and, and all their needs will be met of animals and all this stuff. How much easier will He take care of us, the children of God? He loves us more than all His other creation. Does He not? Amen. And and uh, uh, you bear with me here too. Amen. Mary me in prayer. And uh, uh, God help me. Amen. And uh, uh, are, are we not uh, robbing God uh, in these ways and I want to back you up to another point in Malachi 3 7. Okay? And it's just before the text verse. Even from the days of your fathers, you're gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, yes. saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? And I, I want us to look at ourselves uh, dealing with the church and everything. And, and as with many churches today are falling away by not exercising their ordinances fully and rightfully, not that we are, but we don't want to face that situation in our future leading of the church and make sure it stays in the will of God. Amen? and be prepared. This country's changing fast and we don't know what we're going to face ahead. Amen. But we got to keep the faith. Amen. And be prayed up and leaning on God, reading our Bible and trusting in the Lord and obeying God's Word. Amen. And uh, uh, are we robbing God by not obeying the ordinances and have not kept them, maybe, amen? Yep. And yep. we need to look at ourselves, are we doing it God's way or our own way, amen? Yep. Yep. And uh, uh, we should make sure a person is saved by boldness of testimony of his salvation briefly and not ashamed before accepted into membership reference and uh, Matthew 21, I'm on a jump over to here, not that you got to keep up with me, but uh, bringing out this message, I, I just felt led touching on different scriptures here, and uh, uh, spiritually maybe we can uh, learn from the scriptures what God would have us uh, know here and learn, but in Matthew 21 and the 28th verse, but what think ye, a certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. Amen. And so many of us, uh, we, we, we go through the actions of repentance and prayer for salvation, and are we getting up saved or are we getting up lost? And are we going to follow Jesus, lift up our cross and follow Him and live for Him, or are we going back to the world? Are we going to listen to the world and Satan? Is He going to offer us opportunities of getting wet, rich and following the ways of the world instead of following God and, and putting our own thinking ahead of God that He He died on the cross. He paid for our price uh, of sin. Uh, he bought us with a price as we shared in Scripture. We owe Him 
dedication and obedience. Amen. Are we not robbing our God and our Savior if we don't exercise this obedience and faith and pick up our cross and follow Him and do right and trust the Lord to meet our needs and survival instead of trying to do it on our own? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And God be with us here. And I, I want to bring out uh, two... Uh, uh, not when people get saved, uh, I've saw it in so many churches, and they'll just turn to them, uh, well, did you make a decision tonight? And, and all they're doing is shaking their head, yeah. yes or no, yeah. and we're taking for granted that everything is okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, they're thinking, well, I went through the actions. I knelt and I prayed. Uh, 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 and and I, I know by my own experience of life, I went to a church when I was 12 year old. My family had heard about a revival and my dad was a backslidden preacher. He was put down because he wasn't educated highly. He only had a third grade education and they run him down so that he just quit preaching and he went back to the world drinking and everything. And uh, he'd even beat up my mom and break out the windows and. Uh, he was trying to remodel the house. He'd get mad and just tear up everything. And, uh, he was a farmer and a carpenter. And uh, I remember my mom heard about this revival on her brother's side in his separate Baptist church. And me and my brother was laying out one night under the stars and the moon. And my brother said, uh, you know, there's got to be somebody behind all this. Yeah. creation and everything and I sat sitting there listening to my big brother and I said uh, yeah I believe you're right never thought nothing about it I went on to church in this revival and we, me and my brother we sat on the rear seat I'd never been in church since I was a little baby and all I remember was crying for the bright lights overhead and I've shared these things before but sometimes it's important to say again we shouldn't be all hushed up and shut up and not sharing what God done for us, uh, living our lives like we're ashamed, somebody in the congregation might need to hear it. It, it might help them find their way to Jesus Christ. Amen. And be saved. And I'll never forget, we're sitting there on the back seat and uh, uh, I was listening to this song, Supper Time, about mother calling home. It's supper time. And uh, uh, she'd call home and uh, supper time, and uh, uh, I, I, for the first time, I, I recognized the love of my mother. I loved her more than anything, and I just noticed meanness uh, out of my dad. Didn't really know the person that he should have been, but Satan was getting hope to his life and pulling him astray. And and I'll never forget. Uh, I felt the presence of God. And that song, I was listening to that song, it really got my attention about this mother. Uh, she was on her deathbed and angels took her home to heaven and, and the son could still hear her call her, come home, it's supper time. But he, he didn't know the Lord. And I knew, I recognized for the first time my mother that I love so was like the mother in that song. And you know, I didn't have to be preached to by a preacher. The Lord knows what I need to hear that night. And uh, I'll never forget it. And uh, uh, I recognize my mother, when she died, she's going on to heaven like the mother in that song. And I felt I'm like that boy in that song. I don't know God. I want to know God. Yeah. And you can believe this or not. It's just like the presence of God walked in. Yeah. And I heard his voice. He said, you need me. And I tell you what, it's like John 10, but my sheep hear my voice, and, and you won't listen to a stranger. And, and you know, you think about that seriously. I, I think human nature, uh, common sense, uh, I, I think... Everybody has got an inner feeling. Uh, I can remember where I thought my dad was so mean to my mom. I'd go to school 
And I didn't know God. I didn't know how to pray. I wasn't a Christian. But my inner self was like it was praying out uh -huh. to a God I didn't even know. Yeah. Take care of mom. Yeah. And I didn't even know it, you know. I, I can't explain it. But I, I, I'll never forget. Uh, and it's like uh, uh, when uh, God spoke and made himself present without a shadow of doubt. I knew it was God from on high, yeah. you know, yeah. without a shadow of doubt. Yeah. And, and uh, 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 you know, I think the inner nature, as I say, he made you in the womb of your mother. And, and you know, uh, you're born into this world and you love your mother even right from the start. You're just attached, you know. Yeah. Well, your maker, when he speaks, I think you know without a shadow of doubt. Yeah. That's my God, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, you, you can't explain it. You don't deny it. You don't doubt it. You, you know without a shadow of doubt, that is God talking to me. That's his presence. But I was under conviction. I was in shock that I'm, I'm hearing the voice of God. I'm feeling his presence. I can't see him, but I know he's there. Amen. He's Amen. real without a shadow of doubt. And... The Lord loves everyone. It's not His will that any perish. He wants to make Himself known to you that you may come to Him and be saved and make your decision in life and that you know without a shadow of doubt you're going to heaven. Amen? And it's, it's very real. And God loves you that much. Amen? And He, he ain't going to stay in heaven and services go on and you make a decision up here and the preacher's got to uh, tell God, well, so-and-so made a decision today. If God wasn't present uh, and know all about everything that was done, then they didn't get saved anyway. Because God's going to be present. I'll guarantee you. They won't get saved without His presence and, and answering to their hearts. Amen? And it, it's very real. It's very real. And... I'll, I'll never forget, uh, Mom and Dad could see it in my face that night. I didn't go up that night. And they said, don't worry, son, we're going back. That was on a Monday night. My dad was a carpenter and farmer, so he'd come in off carpenting and farm late. And so we, we was Friday night before we got back. Well, this old boy was on a conviction and miserable. 12-year-old kid couldn't enjoy playing or nothing. He was a miserable kid, I'll guarantee you. He, we finally made it back to church. And, you know, uh, I, I get up and run with these songs of, like uh, Blood Bought Saints. Uh, he came looking for me, and he met me in the aisle. Both of them dealt with my week. He came looking for me on Monday, and he met me in the aisle on Friday. And I, I, I couldn't listen to the songs that night either. It's just like I was on a conviction. I can't explain it. I couldn't hear the songs. I couldn't hear the sermon. And I, I thought if that preacher was preaching at all, it looks like God would have wanted me to hear a sermon or something, you know. But uh, all I remember is the altar call was given, and I... I, I thought, uh, this night I'm going to meet God, you know. Yeah. And I saw Mom stand. I thought, well, she's going to come back to ask me up. And I thought, I don't need Mom to come all the way back here. I'll just walk on up, yeah. you know. Yeah, right. And my dad had got under conviction that night, and he went up to rededicate his life. Yeah. So I guess that's why Mom didn't come to talk to me at the altar. And I don't remember nobody else to either. But I'll never forget, I started up that aisle, had a smile on my face. Yeah. I thought, this night, I'm going to meet God. Yeah, and I want to know Him in my heart. Yeah, and, and it's like God met me in the aisle, and He yeah. said, take that smile off your yeah. face. This is serious business. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think no, uh, God won't talk to nobody. That's all in the Old Testament. Well, you didn't read the New, because He talks to Paul and Peter and... Yeah. Uh, John, all of them, amen. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, so, something's wrong that somebody didn't communicate or pray through or something if God ain't talking to you and convicting you right and wrong and what He wants you to do. Amen? And if He called you to preach, teach, deacon, or sing, whatever, uh, I feel like my Lord's going to let you know it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And uh, amen. Uh, my Lord talks to me. That, yes, that's sir. the God I know. Amen? And, and I'll never forget it. And uh, but uh, uh, I'll never forget, I, I went up that altar and I was praying. And I didn't know how to pray. I must have said 20 times or more, Lord, save me, Lord, save me. And uh, I heard this quiet voice behind me. And uh, it said, you're okay. Stand up and declare yourself saved. And I was just 12 year old. And I'd done said that many times, and I had a conviction. Now there's more to it than what I've done already. If I'd listened to that voice, I'd have got up lost. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I said the same thing that Paul did on the road to Damascus when the Lord blinded him with that great light yeah. uh, on the way to Damascus to rest Christian. Yeah. And when the Lord blinded him, he said, Lord, what would you have me do? Well, I'd never heard the story. I hadn't been in church since I was a baby. Well, I said the same thing. I got serious with God, and I said that. And the Lord didn't speak out loud. He, he just flashed all my sin across yeah. my mind. Yeah. And I repented of them like disobeying mom and dad and cussing and fussing with my brothers and sisters and fighting other people and whatever. And and. and I, I felt the burdens rolled away and peace within. Amen. And, and, and God didn't have to tell me, well, you'd stand up and declare yourself saved. I, I knew it was okay. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and burdens were rolled away and peace within. And I got up and they said, are you saved? And I said, yeah. And, and uh, I, I was happy in the Lord. And, and like me and my brother was discussing that night laying on her back, somebody's behind all this. I'll never forget the next day I was walking uh, around and, and it's like the Lord was right with me walking beside me, but he's in my heart, amen? Yeah. But it's just yeah. like he's walking beside me and he said, I made all this. That's all he said. You know, the Lord talked to me very brief. He don't, he don't say a whole lot, but he gets straight to the point that you know he's there, Amen. And what he's got to tell you, whatever it be, yeah. he gets straight to the point, especially when he's got to chastise you, amen? Yeah. Boy, he get right straight to the point, yeah. and you sit up and listen, amen? Yeah. And if he has to get you sick in bed in the hospital to sit up and listen, he'll do it, amen? Right. And I can tell you stories about that too, but I ain't got time, amen? <laughs> I had to be chastised too. I ain't perfect, and I'm yeah. still growing in the Lord, yeah. amen? But... Uh, uh, amen and amen and praise God and uh, I, I want to take you to another scripture here uh, too uh, shortly uh, uh, we, we should make sure they aren't coming from a cult belief or a denomination full of fellow yeah. clubhouse religion yeah. members should all go in church if not baptized elsewhere the true belief they be baptized in the church in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy yeah. Ghost always. Yeah. Members should accept communion. Members voted for pastors, visitation workers, deacons, teachers, song leaders, singers, missionary evangelists also should be first called by God yeah. to do so before acceptance. We just don't yeah. uh, uh, best friend vote them in for the, everything instead of uh, waiting for God to call them in. They are... Uh, or, to, or they ought to take time and pray about if God wants them yeah. to after yeah. you brought them up. You see what I mean? Right. And, and I think that's what the church is doing. But, you know, a lot of this stuff's going on in other denominations and churches and homosexuals, gays, everything oh, yeah. is entered yeah. the arena of the church leadership. Yeah. And, and oh, so yeah. it's all false doctrine and God ain't in it right. and they're falling away and uh, yeah. maybe that's the one's closing for all we know. Yeah. But uh, uh, we need to make sure we keep our house in order for the God Almighty yeah. and, and uh, do it God's way and by yeah. God's Word. Amen. And... Uh, and I want to take you to 
2 Corinthians 11. Uh, uh, I've, I've took you there before. And uh, we all need reminded and uh, on our toes for the Lord. And for such are false apostles, the 13th uh, through the 15th verses, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed to an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. And, and see, the Satan's got his followers. It, it, it's like the parable about the tares uh, mixed in with the wheat and everything. And, and they're unbelievers and they can outnumber the believers in a church and then mislead the church in decisions uh, and, and future outcome and the downfall of the church comes. Amen? And, and we got to be very protective uh, and uh, protect those things. And if people have knowledge of these people like homosexuals and gays trying to enter the church and take positions, you hear churches are trying to make them okay gays and homosexuals to play the piano in their churches and other positions and uh, they're, they're fighting more for their rights than they are the Christians' rights today. It's more for the ungodly and unbeliever. And we got to stay on our toes. Amen? And uh, 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 members of a church playing instruments of music, piano should be born again believers, avoid unbelievers and gays also. Amen? And it don't hurt to let our children wait till they get saved before we introduce them into their uh, talents and in, uh, interests and everything, you know, of playing. Because it ought to be God's children. Yeah. Uh, amen? Yeah. But they learn from watching us and listening to us. And a lot of times I've always thought the, the youth need to be in with the adults to learn how we're worshiping and praising God and, and everything. And, and would it help them uh, grow better? But as long as they're being preached to and taught uh, of the Word of God, that's what matters, you know. Yeah. And uh, I don't claim to know all the answers. And uh, uh, I worry about the future of the church, amen? And uh, uh, so forth too, amen? Uh, uh, Malachi 3.18 is another point I want us to look at. Um, and go with me to 3.18 of Malachi. Uh, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And are we not robbing God by not discerning between the righteous and the wicked? Between him that serve God and him that serveth him not? Downfall of churches, anything easy accepted today for sure. Be sure to pray about who to trust for righteous decisions or positions in the church. Even people who can claim to be saved and know God can mislead you in the flesh. Amen? Yeah. And 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, as we just read about the ministers of Satan trying to fulfill positions, and we got to be very careful. Churches accepting gays and homosexual, lesbian, also unbelievers, the same crowd and followers with no bonus for righteousness and truth. That's the downfall of many churches today and easily closing down our business for God's not in it at all. Amen? And look at Revelation 3, uh, 14 to 20. Uh, and it's on the uh, church of Laodicea. And... Uh, uh, and to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, the 14th verse, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because I say as I am 
rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the far that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear in the north thine eyes with thy sad, that thou mayest see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Amen. Yeah. And, and the Lord makes himself known to unbelievers yeah. and to born again believers. You hear his voice, whatever, that he is wanting you to know that you need him for salvation and uh, he wants you to preach, teach, sing, witness. Uh, whatever it be, uh, I think God will address you. Amen? He'll make it known, and uh, you'll feel His presence. And you get out of the will of God, as He says there in the uh, 19th verse, uh, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Uh, Hebrews 12 is on that. He chastises His own. He corrects His own. Amen? You get out of the will of God, He's going to let you know it. And, and he'll, he'll bring you down if he's got to break your arm, your back, or whatever, amen? And uh, I've been there, amen? I, I know when God speaks, you can sit up and listen, amen? Yes, sir. Amen. And where a lot of people don't want to hear me preach, the Lord chastised me and whipped me good for trying to excuse myself. I went to a ministry school that I could tell you a long story that I found out uh, they're teaching wrongly and I got out of it. I didn't trust nothing else. And I decided just me and the Lord, I'm going to pray. And, and I don't follow references or nothing. I pray, Holy Spirit, lead me. And, and let the Lord give you the references. Uh, and, and, and you drove uh, in the milk and the meat of the Word. Step by step, God don't rush you into nothing. And I think you grow and mature better. But that's my opinion. Everybody sees things different. So... Uh, but uh, I thank God for it and I feel like I'm more for God would have me be and there's so much false teaching going on in the ministry schools today yeah. I wouldn't send nobody to any of them no. it, it, it better be an independent Baptist school I'll say uh, and, uh, but it, it's really uh, getting sad and heartbreaking people that hold to the word of God to King James 16 11 uh, they're steering them right and be thankful for them and pray for them. And amen. And uh, people need to weigh out these translations with the 1611 King James and, and see why we love it so. Amen. Uh, it's one that talks to me. Uh, I'm an old country boy. I don't know why. It just seems like it fits in with my country amen. ways. Uh, it just touches my heart so. Amen. And. Uh, it just seems to compute with me better. Amen. And uh, praise God. And, you know, uh, are we not robbing God by not uh, discerning these things? Be sure to pray about who to trust, as I said. Okay, and catch up with myself here. Overlook me here. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit... Uh, is not welcome in their midst, as we was reading here in the uh, church of Laodicea. And uh, they leave God outside the church knocking to get inside the church and hearts of Christians and to seek the lost to be saved. And, and Matthew 5, 19 and 20, uh, I won't uh, turn to, and uh, the 19th verse Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. And, and you know you take that... Verse 2, if people ain't living a righteous life uh, and people know about it, they shouldn't even become a member of your church. Yeah, Amen. Right. If somebody's got knowledge of them, they ought to speak up yeah. and say, well, uh, he's not 
live in a straight life. May he's a drunkard at home, you know, yeah. and uh, on drugs and everything. Yeah. And people, like I say, the devil's got his followers. They're trying to sneak into the church, and you've got to protect the church, amen. Yeah. And uh, uh, Matthew seven. Uh, uh, 12 to 23. Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. That, that's the golden rule verse that we know of. Enter ye in at straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. And, and that's that's the road of the unbeliever, following the world and the devil. And uh, if you ain't careful, you may have uh, got up declaring yourself saved, but are you going back to the world or are you going to pick up your cross and follow Jesus? Amen? And, and live rightfully. But uh, 14 verse, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which live unto life, and few there be that find it. And it's those that really pray through no so salvation and you ain't getting up with a think so, maybe so, hope so. You want to know so. Amen. Amen. And it's very important that we try to help these people in decisions and drown them in their faith and, and weigh out their decision that they really get through. And it may pay to have a special class form to read uh, Gospel John and First John and books to understand if you're saved that uh, that's what God wants you to do. Uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 chapters and 1 John and uh, the Gospel John is on salvation. So many of the chapters of understanding uh, to know God and uh, lean on Him and so forth. And uh, you, uh, you know, uh, it, it's something we, we need to weigh out and pray about uh, uh, too uh, for that concern. Uh, that we know they're on the right road and they don't go back to the world. They need to encourage to pray daily and read their Bibles and lean and trust on the Lord daily because Satan's going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he wants to pull them back to the world. And if we don't show them attention and concern, that's Amen. just where they're headed. Amen? Amen. Right. And, and we got to help them. Yeah. And... Uh, we go on to read here. Ye shall know them by their fruits. The 16th verse. Do men gather drapes of thorns or figs of thistle? Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bring forth evil and fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And uh, uh, the born again believers are the good tree, and they're going to bring forth good fruit. But the unbeliever is the uh, evil tree and a corrupt tree and it's going to bring forth evil fruit. Amen? Even if they get in the church like the tares with the wheat, their, their works are, are not no, no account to God. Uh, and, uh, you know, you go on to read here and uh, they're fulfilling ministry and deacons and teachers, missionaries. And, uh, you know, you think about it. You, you take the name of Jesus. It's so powerful when that name is mentioned. You know, Satan can be after you, tempting you, and you can just tell old Satan, get behind me, yeah. Satan, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and just mention that name or uh, uh, make evil leave, you know. Make Satan leave. And, and, you know, you think about it. Them... Uh, so-called unbelievers, followers of Satan in the ministry and positions, deacons, teachers, missionaries, they may preach God's Word and Jesus and be doing just what the preacher ought to do. And, and people might get saved under the Word of God. Not what they're doing, but under the Word of God. And what's their results at the end of the way? They're trying to work their self to heaven without doing it God's way. You know, uh, in John 10, he says, uh, don't be like a thief and a robber. Uh, we must go through uh, the shepherd, uh, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen? And, and we'll, we'll touch on that here shortly. And uh, uh, we go on to read here uh, the 19th verse. Every tree that 
bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast to the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And it's like Matthew 15, 8. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How sincere are they? Amen. In repentance, prayer, and in, uh, in their works for God. If it ain't sincere and they're just uh, doing works to be heard and known uh, at the end of the way before God at the judgment, uh, here's what God says, uh, 22nd verse. Many will say to man that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, who's, uh, and we'll stop right there. But uh, uh, Revelation 3, 19, 20, as we shared, uh, uh, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, but zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him. And he with me, the uh, you obey the voice of God. And uh, John 10, 1 to 5, I'm going to take you there now. And uh, I'll try not to hold you too long here. If you, uh, and uh, I, I pray we got love for God's word. It's like Brother Sonny is preaching this morning. Well, somebody won't leave you. May won't go now, but uh, uh, you know he's testifying, rejoicing in the word of God. We should love God's word enough yeah. to be willing to listen and hear and grow and mature in Christ Jesus. We're all here to learn from one another. Amen. Uh, and everyone's voice is important. Amen. And. Uh, chapter 10 of John, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opened it, and the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And uh, that that's what I mean when you hear God's voice. You know it ain't somebody else. Yeah, it's God. But if you're hearing somebody else's voice, you're going to know the difference too. Yes. There's just something about it you can tell the difference. Yes. Amen. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his yes. voice. Yes. Amen. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Yes. Yes. And you know, the Lord helped me while I was down praying to get saved. I, I didn't listen to the wrong voice. Yeah. He helped me decide between the two. And I could have got up lost and went back to the yeah. world. And I wouldn't be here today probably. Mm -hmm. No telling where I'd have ended up. Thank you, Lord. And I thank my God that he touched my heart to go further than that. Yeah. Amen. And uh, that's how much God loves us. Amen. It's not His will that any perish. Amen. Members should always daily pray morning and night and through the day to stay in the will of God to discern right from wrong and each in their own hearts know truth. Point five, I want to take you. Uh, are we robbing God? when members should be confessing God before mankind and the church willingly, uh, like Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Confess me before man, or I won't confess you before the Father. You deny me, I'll deny you before the Father. And uh, as we touch on uh, Matthew 5, 13, uh, you're the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salty? Is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. And if we're born again believers, uh, the gospel uh, must be carried on. The truth of God's word should be carried on. And we should love God enough to share the gospel, defend Amen. the gospel, and attend church 
and, and be prayer warriors for the ministry and reaching of lost souls and the growth of the church and, and to keep the gospel going and back missionaries as we're doing. And I'm so proud of this church. I love uh, Brother Sonny and all these uh, associate pastors and sisters and all. Uh, I thank God for every one of you. And uh, I feel like you're doing God's will uh, very, very close. And I thank God's yeah, proud of each yeah. and every one of you. And we must keep up the good work. But we don't want to let God down and stay defensive yeah. against this world and what they're going to throw at us. And Satan going to try to interfere and tear down. Yeah. But we got to be ready. Amen? And uh, so... Uh, Matthew 5, 14 and 16, year the lie of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. And uh, it, it corresponds with being the salt to earth too, you know. Yeah. And, and we're going to love the gospel of the Lord enough to defend it. And uh, 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 I, I like uh, John 1, uh, the 6th through the 8th verse, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. A same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And his mission was to be a, a witness of the Lamb of God coming to die uh, in our place on the cross and shed his precious blood to die for the whole world uh, of sin and all. And uh, as he was mission of the Lamb of God going to the cross uh, and being a light for the Lord, that's the true light, and we're uh, adopted light, amen, in Christ Jesus. Well, we as born-again believers, looking back to the cross, our mission is like John the Baptist to witness the gospel and death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ and the love of Christ to know Him and, and to be saved and his, his Word of God to grow and mature in and encourage prayer and study of the Bible to be uh, witnesses and followers of Christ. Amen? Amen? And so we got a similar mission. Are we going to fail God? Are we not robbing God if we don't love Him enough for this obedience and faithfulness uh, to Him? Are we not lying to God and the Holy Spirit if we're not dedicated to those concerns? Amen? And... Uh, of uh, point four, are we robbing God when members should be confessing and before mankind and the church? Oh, I, I done covered that, ain't eh? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, again, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Uh, uh, it's backing up 7, 23. Uh, what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy yes, Ghost, right. which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, and we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives within us. And we should be protecting this body not to go back to the world but be faithful and true and walk uh, 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 in righteousness for our Lord that saved us from hell and a burning lake of fire. Amen. And uh, Matthew 22, uh, I want to take you to. Uh, uh, and if you can't keep up, uh, just listen close. Amen. And uh, 22 and 37 through 40. Um, Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And uh, we should love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, the story of the Good Samaritan to explain loving our neighbors or self. But I, I like to go further. The Lord has always touched my heart uh, uh, to explain if we, we love people, we should tell them about salvation, Jesus Christ, and the gospel, or we fail them. We work in the workplaces, go to school places, and uh, wherever, even our doctors and uh, wherever we be associating with people, we should have a burden for lost souls. Amen. And if we respect and love them, we'll, we'll brag on our friends at uh, work and all that. i got all these friends. But did you ever tell them about Jesus? Yeah. You know? yeah. And are you going to sit back and watch them go to hell because you're worried about losing your job? And the Lord give you that job to start. We, we could give them a track, if nothing else, uh, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, but they need warning. If we love them as a friend, we need to go the rest of the way and tell them about Jesus, salvation, and Him inviting them to our church. Amen? Uh, God expects us to be a little more faithful and loyal. Uh, are we not robbing God and lying to God and Holy Spirit if we ain't obeying the Holy Spirit and will of God for our lives? picking up our cross to follow Him. It's all part of it, amen? And uh, God's going to hold us accountable. And can we face God one day at the judgment knowing we didn't do a thing for Him? How are we going to receive walking into heaven and knowing we didn't do nothing for Him? Uh, that's something to think about. And I don't want the blood of people on my hands. And I will to make sure they pray through and got a no-so salvation and not a think so, maybe so, hope so. And I worry about people. I really do. And uh, 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 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 now. I want to take you to and uh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You notice these readings. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, or, uh, uh, nor effeminate, or, or nor adulteries, uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Notice the ending of that. They shall not enter the kingdom of God. And these kind of people live in this way. We got to make sure they don't enter membership of our church without being saved. Amen. We can't just let enter anything enter in. You know, we got to check them out. Yeah. And, and maybe, if you don't know nothing about them, maybe uh, we uh, might ought to do a survey on the way this world's changing yeah. and our country and yeah. people living. Uh, maybe they ought to be checked out before being voted in. It's getting serious. Amen. It's getting serious. Uh, and uh, maybe I'm being too religious or strict, but. We, we need to protect God's house yes. and the ministry of God. Amen? And uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 23, we're bought with the prizes I brought out. Amen? And uh, uh, looking at point four, uh, are we robbing God uh, by not confessing God before mankind? And... Uh, as I said too, and uh, uh, him dying on the cross in our place, he, we're bought with a price. And are we not robbing God uh, in refusing to stand for right against wrong doing in the churches, our nation, our schools, government leaders, and work job places? Don't you think God holds us accountable to the voice? 
to voice for Him. Amen. And not be silent. And uh, too many of us, uh, we talk like today, well, I'm saved and everything. Uh, uh, they, they can find their way or uh, uh, go through their works of going to church and hearing the gospel. Uh, it's like they don't want to get involved. But uh, yes. it, it's sad their hearts are that hardened and cold right. and, and no burden for lost souls. Uh, they're, they're out of the will of God. Uh, they, their prayer life and reading of God's Word, uh, you know, it, it, it instructs us to have that kind of love for others. Amen? And uh, uh, point five, are we not robbing God by not obeying His voice? First Samuel, uh, time getting away from me, and uh, I, I hate to close out too quick, but... Uh, uh, 1 Samuel uh, 15th chapter and 22nd, 23rd verse. And Samuel said, How the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken to the fat of rams. And uh, Samuel bringing out the soul, it's very important to obey God. And you you don't do it your way and everything, you know. And he's wanting to sacrifice the animals uh, to face the battle of war, and Samuel was supposed to do it, and he didn't have the patience to wait. And if we fail God in obeying His voice the way we're supposed to do things, then we're going to lose the blessings of God. Amen. And, and, and look at twenty third verse: For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is iniquity and adultery because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He have also rejected thee from being king, Samuel tells us. And, and we're following ways of the world and ungodliness if we're disobeying God's word. And a 24th and 25th verses, and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. He's admitting his sin. But you know, he never learned from it. As you read on, he, he never learned. He, he never turned to God and truly repented and, and done obedience to God. And it come to his downfall, you know. And, and now therefore, he's telling Samuel in the 25th uh, fifth verse, Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. But uh, if we've done wrongdoing before God, we need to repent, get prayed up, and worship the Lord in spirit and truth and obedience. Amen. And uh, uh, and all through the Bible is about many of true faith followed and obeyed the voice of God, just like in uh, uh, Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. Amen. As we read, and uh, uh, one thing that touched my heart. Uh, uh, some might think I'm being silly, but the voice of God talking to you and, and the Word of God, you know. The Word of God is talking to you out of the Bible and, and the voice of God when He speaks to your heart. And uh, I, the Lord touched my heart reading one day, uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, or just thinking about it in my mind. In the beginning was the Word. Well, in the beginning was the voice of God. And the Word was with God, and, and the voice of God was with God. Amen. And the voice of God was God. You ever thought of it that way? Amen. And we should be listening to the voice of God and His Word both, reading the Bible, and obey and, and uh, grow in the Lord of obedience. Amen. But uh, that touched my heart. And uh, uh, Matthew 16, I want to take you to, I, I'll try to get you through here real quick. If you bear with me, I feel like the Lord got uh, uh, a lot of good here to uh, grow and learn from. And uh, I'm not fast, I'm a little slow. And uh, uh, tw 16th chapter of Matthew, uh, 24 through 26. And then Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. And for what is man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And if we go back to the world and follow the ways of the world, or somebody offering us riches and uh, things of doing other things instead of obeying God and doing what God wants us to do, then uh, uh, we could lose our soul. We could backslide to uh, uh, of no return, uh, even get to the point on drugs and drinking and blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Uh, we should not tempt ourselves to follow Satan and ways this world to uh, get to that point. We owe God better than that for saving us from hell and uh, uh, burning like a fire. Amen. And, uh, and I, I shared John 1, 6 to 8 way, uh, and uh, Hebrews 3, 7, I've always uh, loved uh, of the voice of God. Uh, uh, Hebrews 3, 7, Word 4, As the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear His voice, in the eighth verse, harden not your hearts as in the propagation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. In the fifteenth verse, while it said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the propagation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. And uh, four seven, again he limited a certain day, saying in David, today after so long a time, it said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And you know, uh, God has talked to many through the Bible, uh, and they obey his voice, and we should be more willing to obey his voice also. And uh, are we not robbing God with point number six here uh, by not preaching the Holy Spirit conviction and drawing of God? Uh, John 5.39 I've touched on these things before, but we need reminding. We, we need to make sure our hearts are in the right place and we know true salvation without a sound, shadow of doubt. Uh, John 5, 39, God's Word says, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And... Uh, John 14, 6, you know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life, and no man come to the Father but by me. And chapter 6 of John and the 37th verse, it's saying three different places here in this chapter. And, and tell me it is not important to have the Holy Spirit drawing and convicting you of salvation and decisions of life as it repeatedly spells it out here in chapter 6, 37. Uh, uh, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And, uh, and the 44th verse, No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And the 65th verse, Therefore said I unto you that no man could come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Amen. And Matthew 11, 28 to 30, uh, if there's a lost or backslidden person here tonight, uh, it's not God's will that any perish. And in the 28th verse of Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And Romans 10, 8 to 11, um, I guess I'm a little old-fashioned. Uh, when, when I'm talking to people and they get under conviction, uh, uh, I like to read them Scripture so I know God is really working with them and they understand God's Word for salvation. And, and, and then I, I, that way I know they're under conviction and God's working with them. 
and I asked them so too. And if they don't feel like their own convictions, then uh, I ain't going to pray with them and get saved. Uh, uh, it's very important. And, uh, and Romans 10, 8 to 11. But what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And confession to me had two applications, Lord, show me. Uh, it's recognizing you're lost and repent of your sin, pray through no soul salvation. And the other application is Matthew 10, 32. Confess me before man or I won't confess you before the Father. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, not to be ashamed, uh, as 11th verse said. And the 13th, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, uh, and I bring out, you know, there's a lot of scripture on just believing. But like we read there in the 6th chapter of John's, uh, 